Hello everybody and welcome back. Here once again we're looking at a test on two population variances and yes this is telling us straight out we're doing a two-tailed test. This one should be pretty obvious to see that for ourselves without being told and of course I'll show you where. Here this is copied from problem 10.2 C. So we had gone through this problem some time ago we were looking at comparing the heights of students and we were given this assignment to compare the average height of students from North America is it different from the average height of students from Europe. So there we did a two population t-test so we are comparing the means whether they're equal or not. Here now we're asked to develop a test to determine if the assumption of equal variances was appropriate. So, of course, when we're doing those two population t-tests, we have to make an assumption about what do we know about the population variance. If we assume that they're equal or not equal, that influences how we calculate the standard error, and that influences how we calculate degrees of freedom. So here now we've got the tools. In module 10, we didn't yet have the tools to, to do that, so we really were just making an assumption. Now we can actually perform a test to determine which approach should we have used. So we're going to perform a test to see if they are equal. So that makes formulating our test relatively straightforward. Here I have my variances. This is a two-tailed test. We have to define our terms, and again, when we're doing an f-test using the f-distribution tables, we have to formulate it so that our test statistic falls on the upper portion of that test statistic, so or of that distribution. So when we have our test statistic like this, we have to make sure that we formulate it so that population 1 is the population that has the larger sample variance. This ensures that the test statistic will fall in the upper portion of that F distribution. This is very, very similar to if we're working with the T distribution or the Z distribution. If we had a difference in our, our sample means, if one sample mean was greater than the other sample mean, depending on how we define those terms, that would make either a positive test statistic or a negative test statistic. It's the same thing here, either except it's always going to be positive. It'll either be in the upper region of that distribution or the lower region of that distribution. Because of the limitations of our F distributions, of our, F, of our F distribution tables, we always want it to be in the upper portion. It would be like saying we always want your T statistic to be positive so that it always falls in the upper portion. That would limit how you define your, your samples in the same way that it's limiting us here. So I see that the Europeans have the larger variance, the larger standard deviation, so that's how I'm going to set up my test. If the evidence supports the null hypotheses, then the assumption of equal variances was appropriate. If the evidence supports the alternative hypotheses, well, maybe we might want to go back if we want to be really precise and accurate go back and redo that test and maybe we'll even get a different result. Here's our test. Our test statistic is 5.3 squared over 3.7 squared. This is going to give me a test statistic of 2.05. Now we're going to do this test at the 05 level of significance and we'll do both critical value and p-value approach again just for practice. I always prefer the p-value approach. It gives us a little bit more information than just the critical value approach. But for good practice, here's our F. This is a two-tailed test. So this is alpha, alpha divided by 2. And we have numerator, let me just rewrite this a little larger. We have numerator and denominator degrees of freedom. We have 32 in the numerator and 
40 and the denominator. So I'm going to come down to my F tables. I have 32 in the numerator. I'm going to just have to round that to 30. And I have 40 in the denominator. So then where those come together, here I have my four critical values and the corresponding probabilities. Our test statistic, remember, was 2.05. So here, that test statistic, it's between 1.9 and 2.2. So my relevant probability is between 0 0.01 and 0 0.025. Okay, so what does that all mean? If I come back up here, I have an F distribution like this. Here's my test statistic. And I've got these two values, 2.2 and what was the other, 1.9. The area in the upper tail from 2.2 was 0 0.01, and all of that region is 0 0.025. And my test statistic is somewhere in between. Let's not forget again, this is a two-tail test. So if this were a one-tail test, my p-value would be between 0 0.01 and 0 0.025. But because this is a two-tail test, we need to double that. Just like any other test that we've done, it doesn't matter that we're using the F distribution. We did it for the chi-square, we did it with the T, we did it for the Z, we do it here for the same reasons. That p-value is the probability of obtaining a test statistic at least as unlikely as the one that we have just obtained. So, our p-value is less than 0.05, greater than 0.02. Our critical value, if we use the critical value approach, is that which corresponds with 0.025, so that's 2.2. And of course, that then defines the rejection region. Our test statistic is in that do not reject region. And my goodness, what a silly mistake that I have made. There we go, it is not 2.02. This 1.9 is the one that corresponds with our critical value. So 1.9 corresponds with an area of alpha divided by 2 in the upper tail. That's 0.025 in the upper tail. So that defines our rejection space. If our test statistic is greater than 1.9, we have evidence to reject. If it is not, then we do not reject. Now, the fact that I made that little mistake, but I was able to really quickly catch it, is because I noticed that what I was writing as my critical value, if I had written my critical value as 2.2, Well, that would have given me a conflicting result because my test statistic is less than 2.2. And less than 2.2 means that I should not reject. But here the p-value approach is telling me I should reject. And so that's another reason why it's really helpful to do both approaches. Again, it's just good practice. It forces you to use those distributions more than you otherwise would. But it's also helpful because it can you can catch little mistakes like the one that I just made. I was getting different conclusions with either of those approaches, and that should never happen. So luckily, I caught that mistake because I'm using both of those approaches. And now I can see that using both the critical value approach, my test statistic lies in the rejection region, and using the p-value approach, my p-value is less than my level of significance. All of these are leading us to reject the null hypotheses. 
which means we have evidence to show that in fact these variances are not equal and therefore that assumption of equal variances was in fact not appropriate. And if we really wanted to be precise, we should maybe consider going back and doing that exercise again. I don't intend to. All that's going to change are a couple of things, but feel free to do it. It might change your conclusion. It might be something more substantial. Okay, thank you all for watching. I hope that that was helpful. Take care. Bye-bye.